Hello chess friends and welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome to another beautiful and spectacular gameplay by the latest version of Stockfish, the powerful Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine Lelenstein in a crazy time mano variation of the Benoni defense and if you're a Benoni defense player I don't think you like this game because Stockfish will simply dismantle, destroy uh, the Benoni with great great tactics with amazing breakthrough ideas, peace sacrifice, deflections, decoys, all of the elements uh, that we love to see of course in a chess game. I never was really a fan of the Benoni defense because it has so many weaknesses, it has so many cracks tracking points and Stockfish will expose I think uh, all of them in this particular game I think I would even dare to say that uh, Stockfish with this game buried simply uh, the Benoni defense six feet under so let's see now what happened with the white pieces uh, Stockfish opened with move d4 knight to f6 by Lelenstein c4 c5 the Benoni d5 e6 knight to c3 e takes d5 c takes d5 we're now in the standard line of the Benoni d6 e4 g6 and now comes the so-called pawn stone variation with the move f4 bishop to g7 we have bishop to b5 hitting the king and many things can be played uh here by black you could maybe cover yourself with bishop to d7 but it leads into a very very aggressive line by white uh white breaks and enters here with the move e5 because you didn't play knight to d7 you don't have a good control of the e5 square now after d takes e5 f takes e5 you cannot take of course the bishop because first of all we pick up the knight and also uh the bishop on g7 is hanging so one piece is lost again here for black instead of bishop to b5 you could also try knight to h5 but now with knight to f3 uh kingside casting bishop to d7 uh here knight to d7 and g4 similar stuff the knight could be trapped you could also maybe i don't know retreat with the knight to g8 but it's simply too passive you already played with the piece so not really a good continuation here for black after bishop to b5 that's why the standard defensive motif here uh, by black is knight from f to d7 we have now a4 by the fish stockfish of course anticipates the possibility of the queen side flank attack with a uh, a6 b5 it's of course the standard idea of the benoni defense with the support of the bishop to break and enter here somehow uh, on the queen side we have knight to a6 uh, by uh, um, Lilenstein trying knight to c7 and kicking away this bishop from uh, the square b5 finally after knight to f3 king side castling castling knight, uh, knight comes of c on c7 of course uh, now comes this idea we have a bishop to d3 connecting now the bishop further to the center and now after move a6 comes i think a very very important motif of this particular line queen to e1 maybe in the beginning a strange uh, square for the knight to play because the queen could be endangered maybe by the rook activity on the e file but this move does several things first of all it prepares a potential e5 breakthrough and also liberates the queen uh here the queen have has access maybe to the g3 square if possible even to the h4 square uh from these two squares i think uh, the king could be further endangered and you could maybe try to play rook to e8 uh maybe not allow here uh, why to play the move e5 this wasn't played in the game but i wanted to show you still the best continuation even if that happens then we play simply f5 we simply break and enter immediately if for instance g takes f5 happens we don't even take we go with the queen on the against the pawn on d6 but also against uh the bishop on the g file and the king is already there so many many tactical problems now for black after something like knight to f6 we simply play now finally e takes f5 you could maybe lose the pawn but it doesn't matter we simply get the bishop into the game if you try f6 then bishop to c4 uh, i think wins the game immediately you cannot cover it here with uh bishop to e6 if you play something like the knight to f6 again then bishop to h6 you're trying maybe to compete queen to g4 you're trying to get the queen into the game but now the position is collapsing here for black so this is of course one line black doesn't have to play necessarily the game uh, exactly like this but i wanted to show you how many great opportunities white has here even after remove rook to e8 in the first place so that's why uh here instead of this move rook to b8 was played by lilenstein continue with its own plan as we said b5 is the main strategic goal stockfish continues now with e5 immediately what should you do again rook to e8 knight to uh, queen to g3 <coughs> leads into this uh tactical problem problems by black knight to g5 in some lines is possible queen to h4 um we can of course include the bishop with f5 into the game bishop to h6 again too much pressure too many pieces are dancing here in front of black's king so after move e5 we have now knight to b6 
uh, Lilenstein goal simply for the weak D5 pawn, but Stockfish doesn't care. Stockfish plays again on the same attacking idea with the move F5. This is now, I think, the motif that many of us would be scared to play, but it's a necessary move. If you don't play this move, Black could maybe get out of this tactical mess, but F5 is really brilliant. And this is now the critical moment, so that's why I wanted to show you now the most important lines um let's see options for black although they didn't um, um uh, Lienstein didn't play that but it's very very important now to solve all of the tactical solutions of this uh, critical position so here you can maybe try bishop to f5 so now we take g takes f5 knight to h4 uh targeting the f5 weakness you can maybe try knight from b to d5 we take you take also with the bishop but now the bishop is coming and i think again uh, you're getting destroyed here on dark squares. The queen is coming. Uh, maybe there are even some rook lifts. Rook to f3, rook to h3. I don't know. Many, many options uh, here for white. Instead of this move bishop to f5, you could maybe try to take um, this pawn on d5. Seems also tempting. Seems maybe that white is losing because white lost a very important centralized pawn. Uh, but now we play simply knight takes d5, knight takes d5, and now f takes g6. After h takes g6, now comes this mean idea of the move queen to e1. Knight to g5 with after d takes e5, queen to h4, and there's not so much that can be done. As I said, very, very uh, crazy, crazy position. If you take here with this pawn, then again, you're liberating uh, this diagonal for the light school bishop. So nothing is working basically here. Too much, too much pressure here against black's position. So that's why after move f5, Lilenstein tried d takes e5. Uh, Stockfish simply continues with f takes g6. Again, let's see options. Uh, if h takes g6 happens, then again this idea. Knight to g5, queen to h4, and uh, deliver checkmate. You can maybe try f6, but white uh, has here really a spectacular idea. Knight to h7. Again, I'm pointing out this wasn't playing the game, but it's very, very important to see the sidelines uh what is really a uh, stockfish continuation here knight to h7 king to h7 queen is coming bishop to g6 and i think after a couple more moves uh the position can be resigned here by black so after f takes g6 that's why f takes g6 but the usual problem now this uh, diagonal is open which makes of course the move knight takes d5 much much harder let's see now the continuation bishop to g5 again let's uh, stop and evaluate the position let's see options for black uh, if you play bishop to f6, this wasn't played again in the game, but seems also like a natural move, then we take. Bishop takes f6, rook to f6, a5, you have to take maybe now bishop to c4. We're simply putting more pressure uh, here again on this diagonal also. Uh, on the d file, you maybe try b5 to kick away the bishop. Uh, we take, takes, takes, and now we pick up the pawn. Uh, you try rook to f5, queen to e6, a check, and now g4. The rook has to step back from the fifth rank. The knight is lost. This one is protected. So again, game over uh, here for black. So that's why for bishop to g5, queen to d6. Here, uh, Lilenstein plays a certain blockade idea uh, with the queen, but it's not so good to play the blockade uh, with the... With, uh, good piece like the queen now the queen can be endangered and of course a uh, stockfish does that immediately with knight to e4 sacrifices simply another pawn after queen to d5 rook to d1 the queen gets endangered we have a counterattack by lilich knight with c4 and now bishop to c2 queen to f7 and now bishop to e3 great move by the fish here um the bishop was very active on g5 but the bishop actually took the good square for the knights here the knight wants to get of course on g5 and now also with bishop to e3 uh, this knight is hanging but also we have access to the c5 score where the bishop can be activated further and even better in the game so that's why knight from b to d5 simply uh, getting out of this attack of the bishop we have now bishop to c5 and again let's see options for black in the game bishop to f5 was played by lilenstein but even if you escape to e8 the problem is now actually look how cramped the position is by black seems so that there are still many squares that the black screen could use but now look at this after knight from f to g5 where is this queen going if you go again to d7 uh, then you're getting in front of um, uh, in getting in front of the rook again so it's simply not working again queen to h4 could work and uh, the position is collapsing for black. Maybe you could try rook to d8 to get out of this attack of the bishop. But again, queen to h4. Look at this. Now the uh, the rook is under fire. You're trying maybe to protect it. Now knight to d6. You're trying to get out of this mess. And again, knight to g5. h6, bishop to g6. You don't have to even react. Black can never take because of the 
uh, possibility of queen to h7 checkmate. The black cannot escape to f8. The rook is covering that square. But whatever happens, even this bishop is uh, uh, targeting the f f f8 square. So again, too many, too many tactical problems for black. So after bishop to c5, that's why Lilienstein tried finally to lock all of these files, to lock all of the diagonals. Uh, Stockfish doesn't want to even take the rook. Stockfish is saying, my bishop on c5 is much, much more powerful than your rook on f8. I don't have to take it. Knight to h4 is not allowing, of course, bishop to e4 uh, because of uh, the rook activity against the queen. Queen comes on e6. Knight to g5. Again, this beautiful square uh, for the knight. That was, I think, the brilliant maneuver. Bishop to e3, bishop to c5, liberating uh, here the square for the knight. So after knight to g5, queen drops back to d7. But again, the queen is getting in front of uh, the rook. We have bishop takes f8 finally, rook takes f8, and now knight takes f5, g takes f5, and now uh, another standard by Stockfish. Maybe just for fun, if you like, pause the video and try to see now the best continuation here for white. I would even dare to say white moves it, wins the game. <coughs> Okay, here Stockfish played the amazing knight takes h7. After king takes h7, bishop to f5, we have rook to f5, and now queen to e4 simply uh, wins the piece. If you try to cover uh, with uh, knight to e7 or maybe with king to g6, then of course here uh, g4 is the option and still this rook will be taken. So that's why after queen to e4, b5 uh, by Lilenstein, rook takes f5, king to g8, h4. We have now b4. Uh, Lilenstein is trying to do something with this two versus one pawn majority on the queen side. We have rook to g5, pinning the bishop. c3, b takes c3, b takes c3. Now rook to g6 with the preparation to play uh, h5, h6. Queen to f7. Now comes this idea. Knight to f4. Mm, maybe not the best option. Stockfish says slightly better here is uh, to play king to h8. But I think in any of these lines now, um, black's position is simply getting destroyed we play rook to d6 you're trying maybe to attack the queen we deliver a check you cover and now we take out this pawn uh, simply too much pressure here you cannot move of course the knight somewhere because you lose also the knight on ex so uh, again a messed up position uh, for blacks after move h5 we have knight to f4 by lilenstein even the uh, worst continuation because after rook to g7 a great move by the fish uh, this is really really game over for instance if you take with the queen uh, on g7 then rook to d8 is again coming you have to play something like this will deliver check queen to h7 you're trying maybe to get here but you get checkmated if you cover yourself then of course uh rook to d7 uh wins the queen on the seventh rank so very very wild stuff after rook to g7 that's why king to g7 but now stockfish took the pawn on e5 we have king to f8 rook to d8 and now you have to cover with the knight and now a beautiful move h6 uh simply continuing to push the spawns there's simply too much dependency here between black's pieces so simply a uh, too overloaded position for black even if you uh, push your pawn further to c2 then there is this option rook takes the uh, uh e8 queen takes e8 and now queen to g7 for instance is a checkmate even so very very well stuff so that's why after move h6 you have to now bring this other piece into the defense and now stockfish uh deflects the queen simply from the defense of the knight if you play here queen to a7 uh maybe a check will simply get it out and uh simply take the uh, take this piece if you try here queen takes h7 a uh, queen to e6 is going to happen now we can even trade off more pieces and go for this pawn this is of course a completely completely winning endgame here for white with this extra pawn and with the rook versus knight uh nothing to do anymore for black after move h7 in this particular position lilenstein resigned so great great game by the fish really a nice attacking idea against the Benoni defense. I hope there's something for you. You see the spawn storm idea then later with this Taimanov idea uh, is very, very valuable against the Benoni defense. I think many of us are still struggling against the Benoni. So that's why I think this top AI uh, games are very useful. Of course, there are many sidelines, but as a cornerstone preparation, there's, there's something that you could study in the beginning and then later expand with different sidelines, with different opportunities. I think this is a cornerstone 
uh, game very very useful brilliant brilliant attack again by stockfish 60 so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot the interesting ideas of the taimano variation of the benoni defense if you want to see more ultra aggressive chess games like this check out our comment to chess games play by computer series with some more games play by stockfish alpha zero lila zero and many many more and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best of course